Hello, it's Keith here. We're going to try something a little bit different today. Now, um, if you've been following my channel and generally sort of hear about what I've been doing, I've been recently porting my Amstrad CPC game, Chibi Akamas, to the MSX and the ZX Spectrum. Now, those conversions are pretty much done now, and I'm at the stage where I'm at the final stages of beta testing, and I'm actually going to start testing the game on the real computers. And I thought it might be interesting for some of you to see, firstly, the procedure of testing, but also if you're not familiar with the real hardware and you've only ever used the emulators, you might be curious to see how I'm actually connecting my machines, my real machines, my ZX Spectrum Plus 3 here, to a secure, card, secure digital card reader and how I'm able to actually test my images quickly on these machines, um, how I'm connecting them to the, my display here and things, because sometimes it can be a little tricky, especially when you're in Japan like I am and your TV can't take a, an English signal and I'm also on 210 volts, so I'm having to use a step-up converter. So, um, I've got the screen here. Um, we're going to zoom in on the screen later, but first let's have a look at the actual hardware I'm using. And I've got this um, little GoPro camera here, and hopefully we'll be able to have a look here. So, the first thing to show you here is um, inside of this protective bubble wrap here is a little PCB that I made, and this is actually um, just so I could convert I'm using the RGB signal from the, um, the spectrum here and I'm I've got it plugged into one of those arcade converter boxes which works quite nicely for connecting various systems to my Japanese TV because my Japanese TV can't receive, it can receive a PAL composite signal but it, it can't receive the sort of TV aerial signal so um, that's what I, I tend to use the RGB box if I can um, and then over here you see I've got my SD card emulator the HXC as it's called. Now I'll um, try and show you a video added to this of how to actually convert the DSK files to the format this needs, but it's very, very simple. Okay, so as promised, this is how you convert the files. So I've got my two disk images here, which I usually use with my emulator. And the easiest way to do it is just drag drop them onto this software here and then click export and then save them to your destination, which would be my SD card here. Now, I'm not actually gonna save them because this is the SD card from my um, little camera but uh, you would just save that and then just drag the second one onto here, click export, save it here again, and there you go. And then you can select them from the display on my little HXC floppy emulator. If you're gonna do this to, for development purposes, I would recommend if you have the choice to get, if that you have the possibility to get the one with the display because the display will show you what sectors the, are being read and written on the disk. So if you have problems with corruption or crashes, you can use the location that the disk was reading or writing when it crashed to help you debug. And I did have that as a real problem when, when I was doing my original Amstrad game. There was a bug in my code and it was corrupting the disk and it was because I could see it was writing to the disk, I knew that there was something going wrong. And also when I've had crashes, I've been able to tell at what point the code has corrupted by seeing what sector was being, re being read at the time. So definitely if you are gonna buy one of these, make sure you have the dis use the display if you've got it. And if you can get it to the external one, then you've definitely got the display. M one of my Amstrads has a built-in internal machine drive, but it doesn't have the display attached and that would have made my debugging much, much harder. So that's just some advice from me. Anyway, let's get back to the, um, the video of the, of the Spectrum itself. You'll see I've just got a five volt line in here. And over here you can see I'm just using them. Um, it's coming loose, come, it's on waggling it, which is gonna make, give me a hard time. This is just a standard old style floppy disk con connector. Um, and the one that plugs into the spectrum here is, um, this is the side that would have plugged into a five and a quarter drive. And then I've got the middle one plugged into the HXC um, because this one on the end actually has a pin blocked in so I couldn't use that. You'll see it's rather short here. But I can't complain too much because I actually was very lucky and got it for 300 yen, which is about two euros from the second hand shop near me. Now these are gold dust now and the only one I've managed to find recently was on Amazon, which is being sold for um, Ichiman yen, which is about 80 pounds. So that's not selling for some strange reason. So yes, um, I was very lucky to get this, so I can't complain too much about the length. Okay, so yep, um, that's about all I can show you here. So let's um, zoom in on the screen and let's have a look at that. So now um, I'm, I've got this um, disk drive connected as the B drive to this machine. Now I believe if it was connected on a real floppy disk it would work from the loader but because it's connected to the B drive that does not work. So what I'm going to go is go to plus three basic and then I type I need to select the B drive and to do that we type load quote 
three. Where's the colon? Sorry. There it is. You'll have to bear with me on typing on the Spectrum. I'm not familiar with the Spectrum keyboard and I do find it rather difficult. And then if we type in load quote disk and then quote and then hit enter. Now we are now loading from my um, SD card virtual floppy disk drive and the game is loading. Now I did quickly test it before I um, started recording the video. I did a very silly thing at first and plugged in my Amstrad CPC joystick and wondered why it wasn't working and then I looked at the side and it said use Sinclair only. So um, yes, <laughs> good job they wrote it on there because silly people like me might have forgotten. Um, this machine doesn't have a Kempson joystick, the game does support it but I, I, I don't have one on this. My other Spectrum which has a um, TRD emulator does have one so we'll have a look at that on a later date but today I'll be playing with keys. As I say I've already loaded the game once so hopefully it's remembered my keys. It's supposed to save them to the um, floppy disk drive when you redefine them. So here's the main menu. You can see you can press the zero key to set controls, but I'm, say, I'm hoping we don't need to do that. So we'll just start the game. And here we go. So yeah, my keys have been saved, okay, and here's the game itself. Now I'll just try and talk about the game a little bit while I play, just to um, give you some information on it. Um, the game has been ported from the, the Amstrad CPC version, and um, despite the considerable differences between the CPC and the Spectrum, I would estimate about 80% of the code is the same. Um, all of the logic code with regards to the sort of drawing of the level is identical. The backgrounds of the levels have been completely redrawn, um, but that was true for the Amstrad CPC as well because the original game only had very basic backgrounds, whereas this new version actually has improved backgrounds. Uh, of course, all of the sprites have had to be recolored. I wrote my own sprite editing software, which I will be making free and open source when the game will be when the game is released. The game itself is, will also be open source, um, but. Um, it's, it's not available yet. There's a beta edition available to my patrons. I'm hoping the game will see a physical release at some point, but um, at the moment I can't give you any estimate on when that's going to happen because that's not me who's actually sort of taking charge of that physical release. So at the moment I'm just working as hard as I can getting this beta tested. Um, now after the physical release has occurred, I'm planning to um, release the game free as a disc image for people to download and play on their emulators or with their disc emulators like here. And at that point the game will be released as open source as well. Because I do want people to have the opportunity to sort of take it to the code and learn from it. Because when I made this game, I've learned from everyone else as well. So it's kind of, you know, trying to give, give back to people in the same ways as I've given to you. Now, I don't know if people have realised who've been watching my tutorial series, but bits of the tutorials are firstly based on what I've learned writing this game, but other bits are actually literally the code copied, um, copied from the Chibiakama's game, just documented and, um, you know, repackaged in simpler form. And that's going to become more and more apparent as the tutorials can proceed, because while we're at relatively simple stages at the moment, I do plan to sort of really push it as far as I can go with regards to making the full game, making a full game. You can see we now have just finished the first half of the first level. Every level has a boss battle, but there is a load in between. The game is planned for release as a tape image. However, it's not really suited to a real tape drive because every time you end the game, you'd have to rewind to the sort of start of the tape again. And there's a lot of load, there would be a lot of loading. So it's really only designed for image, for, for tape image systems. So here's the first boss battle, which is this giant skull monster here, which is supposed to be a cross between a skull and a spider. Um, you can see the bullets are very big in these battles. Um, I should point out they were much smaller on the Amstrad CPC version. They were about two pixels, they were just two pixels square on the Amstrad CPC. But because the um, Spectrum only has two colours, I wasn't able to, it wasn't really, you weren't able to see them at that size. So I've made them much bigger on the Spectrum, but the, the hit zone is exactly the same. So it's only if the middle of the bullet hits the middle of your character. I don't know if you can see, but there's a kind of flashing blob in the middle of the character. And it's only when that middle, those two middles collide that you actually get hit. 
Now I have smart bombs that I can use to wipe the screen. Um, if I get enough coins, I gain a. Oh, I've already won. If I gain enough coins, I do gain a, a special weapon, and um, that's achieved by pressing both fire buttons at the same time. And I'll just show you that in a moment. So in between levels, you get this little sort of cut graphic, which was just a bit of sort of. Um, I wanted to add some, some cartoon bits, but I didn't have a lot of time with this game. So if I press both fire buttons at once, you'll see I'm now firing in all four directions. And um, every, I think it's every 50 coins now, every, every 50 coins you get, um, you do gain some power up. And um, when, you, when you get over, you, you can see the power up in the top, top left corner here. And when you get more than 50 of it, you actually fire in all, all eight directions. So sort of saving it up does actually give you an added bonus to that. Um, it's called crossfire or burst mode in the um, documentation. But as I say, if you save it up, you will get an extra boost there. So in this level, we're, fight we're supposed to be in a forest and we're fighting weird monsters, including zombie capybara. And um, the um, Suzume Bachi, the Makadi Bachi, sorry. I, it was a cross between the Makadi insect and the Suzume Bachi, and I'm forgetting the names of my own characters. Uh, I originally wrote this game two years ago on the Amstrad CPC and um, the port I've been doing over the last six months. So I'm actually, you know, while I know the code and the levels fairly well, I'm actually a bit rusty on some of the names of the characters because it was a long time ago now I actually designed them and sort of come, came up with the ideas of them. As I said, they, the, the graphics have all been redesigned because the ZX Spectrum version, the, the MSX version has 16 colors and the ZX Spectrum version has two and is limited to color blocks. Now, on the um, Spectrum version, to enhance the graphics as best I can, you may notice I'm limiting the position of the um, enemies and the other sprite objects to an 8x8 pixel block so that the, the colours work as well as they can. The uh, main character, Chibiko, the, the flying character, she isn't limited is in any such way. Um, she's, she, the, there's sort of two sprites in the system so that I can move a half width which matches the, the precision that the Amstrad CPC had. And the vertical movement is, um, is at the sort of, I think it's at the two pixel level. So that's why you get the sort of color clash effect on the main character. The game is a simultaneous two player, of course. I'm on my own, so I've got no one to play with. But I will just show you the second character. We're now getting to the um, second boss battle, which is the Zombie Chew character. Um, you'll notice there's a spoof um, boss battle message. Um, yeah, here's the second character, which is um, Chibiko's brother, who's um, Chibiko's a vampire, and uh, her brother's supposed to be a ghoul called Botchan. So um, y the game is a simultaneous two-player if you can get enough joysticks and avoid the, color the key clash. But as you can see, it all seems to be working quite nicely here. So um, I'm not going to show you any more of the game because I'd really quite like you to um, like like to sort of pay for it maybe on and buy the physical version if that's your thing. But otherwise, please wait for the game to come out. Uh, on on downloadable disc image and please have a go at it because I really hope I'd really like you to enjoy it. Thanks for watching together and goodbye.